Okay, today we're gonna do uh, speed matching. I've uh, seen a number of people asking questions about speed matching, so I thought I'd put together a video and hopefully it's relatively quick. Uh, the method I'm gonna use today involves a circular track. You can kind of see it behind me there. I'm gonna speed match two engines. In order to use this method, you do need a continuous loop of track, whether it's a circle or oval, doesn't matter, uh, but you're gonna need that. So before you get started on doing the speed matching, there's some setup issues that you need to do. And so what we have here from a speed matching perspective are the, the setup issues. So we'll go through these. The first, let me rearrange this a little bit because I have to be able to read this as what I wrote as well. You need to turn BEM back. BEMF backward, you know, whatever it is. Anyway, you need to turn this off. Works great for a single loco. If you have a, multiple locomotives with it, you have a problem because they fight against each other. If you have a Digitrax unit, CV57 has to be set to zero. If you have a TCS unit, CV61 has to be set to zero. And with the locomotives I have, I have today I have one Digitrax, one TCS. The next, you need to set each decoder's DCC address to the cab number, whatever you want. Uh, in my case, I've got 8500 and 8146. So if I look at the locomotive, I, I know what the DCC address is. These have to be unique. Next up is I want to set the default three point curve, three point speed curve, so that CV0, the start, is, uh, sorry, CV2 is at zero, which is the start. CV6, which is the mid range, is 128. And CV5 is 255, uh, which is the maximum. So set each of the CVs for each of the locals for that. So you get V start, V min, and V max. Then I want to set the momentum to zero, because uh, I don't want it. I'll play around with that later if I want. So CV3 and CV4 both have to be set to a value of zero. And then finally, in order to get going on this, I want to set the advanced consisting address, which is CV19, to 81. But for my second locomotive, I want it to run back to front so that it's running in the opposite direction. In order to do that, I have to add 128 to the number here, the advanced consist number. And if I do that, I get 209. So in this case, I'll set CV19 in the lead locomotive to 81 and I'll set CV19 in the trailing locomotive to 209 and then they'll run in the proper direction. So once you do all that and go ahead and start up your system what I have here is the two locomotives on the track so you can see them over there and in this case uh, you can see one's a whole bunch faster the Canadian Pacific's in front of the Union Pacific and I've got the Canadian Pacific running backwards, so it's supposed to be behind. Now, it's 8500, and so what I'll do on my Digitrax unit here is I have 8500 in on this cab. I have this one controlling the speed of the locomotives in their consist number, but I can use programming on the main with this to change that guy. Now, if I go to max speed, you'll notice that the Canadian Pacific is gaining a whole bunch. So what I'm going to do is go into programming mode here on this throttle. I'm just going to click it so it shows I'm on that one. Now if I just change the throttle nothing will happen because it's an advanced consist. But if I go into programming and I want a PO for programming on the main 8500 and I want to change the maximum and remember what we said here, Vmax is CV5, so I'm going to change CV5 on here, and that's 20 CV5, and I am going to change it to a value of 200. So I'm going to drop it a fair amount. I'm going to drop it. So part of the lesson I forgot about is you need to warm them up first. Now that they're warmed up, they're both set to their default values. So the CP is 255 max, 128 mid and zero. And so is the uh, UP. 
and I'm just going to let Okay, with both locals fully warmed up, let's run around and see what happens. Now you can see the Union Pacific's a little bit faster than the CN, so I'm going to go ahead here, and I know it's 8146. I can use a stick switch, we'll hit exit. I want to select this. I want to select local 8146. Enter. Then I want to program it on the main. And I want the max range. I'm going to cut down to 225. In fact, at this point, I'm going to cut the max range down to 200. And if you're looking at it, you'll see that the UP has gotten noticeably slower. So it's going to have to be increased. But just to let the other one catch up, I'm going to make it 150. And you can see how the lead local is a lot slower now. Okay. I sped it back up again with a setting of 240. I want to drop that to uh, 230. Visually looking at it, it's getting a lot closer. Let them come around and I'll drop the throttle to zero and separate them out. Okay, so we'll just uncouple these guys. Now we want to set the 50% throttle. So what we're going to do here is immediately advance to 50%. Oh, and you can see how much faster that red one was. So that's 8,500. So on here, I got to select local 8,500. Enter. Program on the main for 8,500. I want to do CV6. And it's currently 128. I'm going to drop it to 100. 50% throttle. You can see we're getting better response now. Okay, so if I go to, uh, we'll do an exit on this. If I go to max throttle, those guys are now maxed pretty close. And if I go to 50% throttle, they're pretty close. Now I want to do V start, which I'm going to do at about 10% throttle. There's zero. There's 10. And the Union Pacific isn't even going yet. So I'm going to adjust the start voltage on the Union Pacific so it looks like the Canadian Pacific. Correction and go back to 10. This is the normal direction of travel, and this is the one you really want to make sure is operating properly. They're close, but I think 8146 needs a little bit more. One direction, that's the direction they'll normally go at, and that's what I want to do my adjusting to. So if I'm at 10% throttle now, gap's fine. If I go to 50%, Now it's a little slow. And you can see at this speed they need to be relatively close together so that you can figure out whether they're the same speed or not. Now remember in this direction the CP is going to have a bunch of cars behind it, and it'll lag even more. So it's a little bit faster. That's not too bad.
Right there, it's close, and I'm going to go with that one. Now, if I go 100% throttle, pretty darn close. I go to 50% throttle, pretty close. I go to 10% throttle. They're both crawling along. Now, when we go backwards, we'll start at, well, we're at 20% throttle here. I'm going to go up to 50. You'll often see a different result going backwards. Depends how they've been broken in and other things. So you'll see UPs overtaking the CP at 100%. They still match pretty good. Anyway, that's speed matching. Uh, the last test, if you really want to do it, is go ahead and link these two guys together. Just couple them. And go ahead and go through the throttle. Listen, see if you hear any wheel spin. Now these guys are body mount couplers, they're short couplers, so I'm not real happy with all of them getting them changed over. But for now they're okay. And uh, the other thing you may have noticed is the lights aren't working. And there's another CV to set in order to uh, get those working. So from my perspective, those are speed match more than well enough to run on the way out now. Thanks for watching.